Okay, we are moving on to section 3.4, and we're going to use truth tables again to show that an argument is valid. Um, also to show that if it's invalid, and then we'll do some other valid arguments and common fallacies. Oh boy. Okay, okay. <sighs> to verify an argument, you're, you first are going to start with some statements, and they call those the premises. And then it'll be followed by a single statement called the conclusion. Now in some of these you'll have two premises and on others you'll have three. I don't think we do any more than three, just two and three. Anyway, an argument is valid if whenever all of the premises are true, then the conclusion must also be true. Now, the difference, um, the way it's going to be presented to you is this way. They're going to give you a series of premises and they're going to be, I guess I shouldn't highlight that part. It's just going to look like this. And they'll be piled on top of each other. And then it'll be followed by a conclusion. And they use the three little dot thing there to mean therefore. And the line that separates the two, this line right here, that is actually over here your if-then statement. So it's if all of these premises, then the conclusion. So the way they wrote it out in words is, if the first premise is true, and the second premise is true, then the conclusion is true. Now, for every premise that you have, you have to connect them with an and. And so on this one, I just have the two premises. The first premise is if P then Q. That's the top one. And then the second one is just the statement P. But you have to connect them with an AND. So you'll notice that they put parentheses around the first one because this is an entire premise, if P then Q. And, and then you have P, and then therefore, this is your therefore, the three dots, therefore, and the therefore is like the, it's like after the arrow in the if-then statement. And so that's over here, I'm trying to show it to you color-coded. And they do put all of the premises in brackets here. Because it's gonna be if all of that, then whatever's on the other side of the arrow. And in this case, it's just a Q. So on the next slide, it shows you the entire truth table. You can see it starts with the, um, where's that color, there we go. It starts with this, you know, which is what is on that handout that I showed you in the last video, I think, or 3.2. Uh, you have two statements, P and Q. Either they're both true, or P is true when Q is false, or P is false when Q is true, or they're both false. Right, And then they come over here and they um, look for, they wrote out the first premise here, if P then Q, that's this one right here, if P then Q, and P, there's P, and they connect it with the and, which is right here, that purple's not showing up very well, and then, uh, no, I used green for that, yep, sorry. Trying to color code. And then you've got the if then symbol, which is right here. <laughs> this isn't working very well. Blue on top of blue is not working very well. Um, so anyway, um, what I would do is um, I would start with um, column P here, which 
this is column P, so I just copy it here, and I also copy it there, and then this is column Q, which I would copy there and copy there, and then you have to do, um, let me see, I think a bright pink might work. Um, step number one here will be the if then between those two. And then step two uh, is, I don't know why they made that step two. They're just copying P down. This is what I would do for step two. Their step three would be my step two. <clears throat> and so you have to calculate all of this first. And then to do this and right here, it has to go between the result you got here and the column P over there. And then to do the if then on the end, I need another color, um, what orange, uh, to get this one, this would be, this would be your last step. And to get this one, um, it's going to be if the last thing I did over here was actually this column and then, then that. So if true, then true is true. If false, then false is true. If false, then true is true. If false, then false is true. And that turns out to be a tautology. Now, um, this one is done so often that whoever, you know, was working with truth tables realized that this, these two premises connected with an and as your if part, and then it comes out then as Q, it happens so often, and it will always be a tautology, so therefore it's valid. They gave it a name, and they called it the law of detachment. And that is on your little worksheet that I handed out. So in the next video, I'm going to pull that up and we're going to talk about the different types of arguments.